All right, auto part DIYers. I want to go over a spreadsheet I've just put together, mainly to keep track of all the service items I have done on my vehicles and the uh, specifications from torque settings to quantities of fluid required and to just general notes and even links to uh, other resources and or the products uh, like filters, oil, stuff that I bought. Yeah, why did I do this? I do, I do this for some of the boats I manage in that as well. And it just makes life easier. Once you start going through it once, you build up a spreadsheet like this. And so the next time uh, servicing comes around, you have a historical record of what you did in the past, any issues that came up. And I guess uh, more importantly, what I found helps is uh, it shows you what you did in that. Oh, I forgot I did that last time. Like the, the uh, um, what was that one thing I just did? See, I forgot the uh, PCV valve, right? Uh, stuff like that. And what's the part number? What's the link to the product and where I bought it? Stuff like that. Uh, and it just makes life easier where to get it. One click. And uh, if you don't know. You click on the link and it doesn't show up. Big deal. It it'll, should get you there. should get you close enough. At least you have the description of the product, like the oil, you know, 0W20. You got the torques. You got the oil filter number. Uh, this is on a 2012 Toyota Sequoia. I am using, a, what is this, Google Sheets, which is nice because then you can access it from your phone. Uh, it's not the horrible Microsoft products, the evil empire products that are just crap. I like Google Sheets a lot better. So this is the major stuff I just did within the past couple of weeks. On the 2012 so Sequoia, most of the stuff I didn't know I had to do. I'm so ignorant sometimes, or I just did not even cross my mind. So let's go through, yeah, what I did. Um, so on the 2012 Sequoia, had this since new, uh, not many miles on it, about 115,000. Some rust down here were down in the south. Uh, not terrible. I have teenage daughter driving it, so that's more detrimental to the vehicle than almost as bad as not maintaining it because they bang up things very easily. Uh, so here's some of the major stuff I just went through. Uh, of course, engine oil. I was, uh, I was doped into the, uh, the belief 10 years, just let the oil go. Not 10 years, 10,000 miles, and uh, then change it. Or until dark and I, I listen to other people the beauty of YouTube the good side of YouTube there's a very bad dark side of YouTube whereas you know Twitter's all bad YouTube is uh, mostly bad but there's some good educational stuff you can learn stuff and a lot of DIY stuff on uh, how to learn how to fix things how to maintain your vehicles my god quick quick side note I went to remove the skid plate uh, change the oil on the Sequoia they blew off two of the bolts of the five bolts holding the skid plate, the mechanics, the last shot. And I went, come on, really? Come on, man. Uh, at least couldn't you tell me that you did that and or try to drill them out? I would have paid you to freaking weld a nut to them and get those out of there. Because be just, it's just a little crap like that that drives me nuts. All right, that's fine. Got that off. I ended up... Uh, getting the rust off that not much rust just you know a little bit of rust was on the skid plate and i just coated it in plasti dip just to coat it you know maybe some uh, sound deafening sound deadening and uh, just to stop the rust all right and then i get to removing the filter housing and or, and also the drain plug they over tightened them oh dear god there is a manual guys in the shop service techs listen there's a thing called torque specs just use them it's not that hard i just hate when they over tighten it and that's my dread of uh, always working on cars. You never really know what the last mechanic screwed up or over tightened or broke. And uh, now I just want to maintain as much as I can because YouTube does help a lot with that. And that's the beauty of it. And you can find parts on Amazon or any of these Toyota sites now. Most of these dealers have the Toyota um, parts diagram sites. You can go in and actually look at the schematics of your vehicle, look at the parts and get the exact parts you need from the Toyota dealerships and they'll mail them to you, which is ship them to you, which is a beautiful thing. So then you can kind of Almost guaranteed you're getting the right part, the right fitment by putting in your VIN number, year, model, make, engine, blah, blah, blah. 
helps a lot I mean, in today's world with uh short of the mechanics just you know breaking stuff and over tightening and or not putting the right oil in or putting crap oil in and uh, just the fees alone i know the techs aren't making the money the shops are ripping off the techs the owners rip off the techs they treat them like garbage which is not right because the techs are the, probably the smartest people skill wise in that building smart street smart is the owner because he's taking advantage of the service tax. But anyway, with the cost of these stupid dealerships and setting appointments up and just hoping they don't break something or the car doesn't fall off the lift, blah, 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 is uh, just the cost. Just do it yourself, man. Take the time. It's yeah, you know, just take your time. Hopefully you have a garage and uh, you can do this stuff and not be rushed. But uh, yeah, anyway, having said all this stuff, I decided to put together everything I did recently to this Sequoia because the goal is to make these cars last. Uh, so I'm going to go with the, f um, like I said, not 10,000 mile oil change. I'm going with the 5,000 mile oil change and or whichever comes first, six months. I used to let it go a year. That's bad, bad. I want these cars to last. So now I'm just going to do get on a six month schedule, make sure I got all the parts. So what I do, I have all the tools and everything, everything for the auto. I put in one bin, you know, the tools, the sockets for spark plugs for the oil filter cap. And if it's a crappy one, I spend a couple extra bucks to get a decent one. Uh, breaker bar if I need it. Lube for um, protecting the underside, like uh, the, uh, uh, the blaster surface shield or the PB blaster. Uh, bolt rust stuff to get bolts off let it soak that stuff works if you're uh if you're hesitant about removing a bolt or you're having a stubborn bolt man i soaked that a week ahead of time before i tackled these bolts soaked 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 and this is on the differential on the sequoia it has some rust i was like oh god this is not going to be good it's a 10 millimeter allen oh dear it's going to strip soaked 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 Went up, removed the rust with the wire brush, soaked some more, gave it a little tap, five taps with the little hammer on the actual nut. Bam, the thing just came off so easily. It was a thing of beauty. No forcing, no like, oh dear God, I'm going to strip this. And that was the same on the transfer case and on the front diff, even the oil drain plug, which again, I said the mechanic over tightened. Uh, yeah, so good to go. And while I'm under there, I put some surface shield on the undercarriage where stuff is starting to rust on the frame just to cover it wire brush what I could off and um, just coat it, just any prevention to keep the oxygen off and keep this thing riding and running as long as I can before the rust takes over. And hopefully I just keep fighting it. It's just a matter of spending a, you know, once you get over the initial hump is uh, just maintaining it. And that's what this stuff, I went and bought, got the box, put all my tools in, everything's in one location. So when I get to do this again in six months for the oil, the basic oil and the basic stuff, not all the diff stuff and the coolant and all that crap, but that's there too. So it's one stop. I don't have to dig around for stuff. And I don't have to try to remember what parts, what quantities, what the torques, blah, blah, blah. I believe 100%. Um, I believe 100% in torquing stuff. That way, there's no doubt. You got it torqued. You're not going to worry about it bolt falling off or you over tightened it or stripped the threads or cracked it or whatever. So go by the torques. And also now what's cool with the Toyota sites, if you don't have your user manuals, you can actually go to these Toyota sites and get the manual downloaded. And uh, have the PDF in front of you. It's just the basic user manual, but it shows you quantities, uh, not torques, but quantities of fluids and stuff like that, which which helps in the type of fluid like uh, coolant fluid as well. So let's go through real quick what I just recently did in the past couple of weeks on this 2012 Sequoia. And you can see in six months, I'm gonna forget all this crap. So this is why I put together a spreadsheet. I should put the VIN number in here. I keep forgetting to get it from the car, but I will put that in here because like I said, some of these Toyota sites make it easy, but put in the VIN number and they help you find the right part with the diagram. The schematic of the engine, the auto, it's beautiful, man. I love it. That way you know what part it is. And you're kind of learning about your vehicle as well. Uh, yeah, with the cost of new cars, dudes, I am not buying a new car. No way. Unless the teenager smashes this one up, then I'll be upset. And then may I'll just go without a car. I don't know. It's just ridiculous. So maintain, maintain, maintain. I enjoy it. I do enjoy it. It gets a little messy now and then. But as you do it and take notes 
and uh, get lots of cardboard or get the right tools, it becomes less messy as you keep doing it. Uh, like the differential change was messy because I'd use the squeeze bags and next I'd try to pump. And it's just messy, messy, messy. So you just refine it and you get better as you go. All right, so let's roll here real quick. Uh, what do we got? So we got engine oil, did that. Check the quantities. I always like to make sure the quantities match what I put in based on the manual, boom. Here's the oil link right there. Yeah, look, see that? Look at that, you don't believe me? Look at that, just mouse over. And in the uh, Google Sheets, you can see the link to what oil you're using. Uh, there was a note from somebody else that they like to use the Pennzoil Platinum Full Synthetic 0W20, I don't know. I, I just think I'll stick with the oil I know and I've been using, which again, mouse over, boom, you get that. All right, continuing on, oil filter for this model is, there you go, uh, 04152YZZA4. I ordered five, just to have them. It's cheaper to order. It's cheaper to order a couple versus one at a time, and then you got them. Just keep them dry, keep them clean, keep them stored. And again, that's why I got the big storage box. Put everything in one box. All right, I did the rear differ differential fluid. Like I said, a lot of prep ahead of time on the drain and fill plug. Uh, by that, I meant uh, putting PB Blaster on it just to make sure it wasn't seized, rusted solid. Um, then I uh, ordered the washers as well. Uh, well with the, again, with the BB Blaster, I tapped on it with a hammer before removing. I got a 10 millimeter socket. I had to buy that. I didn't have one. So amazing how little crap tools you need yet to buy. So again, I built up my old baseline. So here we go. This is the Valvoline I used for the differentials, the front to transfer, and the rear. And I did verify in the manual, like I mentioned that I downloaded the differential, I mean the transfer doesn't just use 75, it does say you can use the 75 weight 90. So in my Sequoia, in my instance, the transfer says exactly that. You don't need to use that expensive 75 weight stuff made with mineral spirits and bourbon, whatever they put in it. So anyway, there's that. There is also, what's this one? These are the washers you need, the crush washers and the copper or brass, whatever they are, for the uh, drain plugs on these differentials. Uh, this is more of the same. Just, I, bought, I got lots of washers, man. I even got the felt, uh, what is it, the felt oil drain pan washers. I used to always reuse the same one. I was just stupid. But uh, now I just got a bunch of them. They're cheap, a couple bucks, man. So the oil, the felt ones that you put on the oil drain plug, got all new ones on that. Yeah, why not do it right, man? If you're gonna do it, do it right. All right, front differential, same old show, same stuff, same oil. And the washers, I just cut and paste on that. Then the transfer case, same old stuff. Boom, and then of course the washers with the Oh, what do we got with the uh, torque settings? And then I don't know why I had this skid plate bolts, 13 foot pounds. Oh, on this Sequoia, there's a stupid little two covers kind of blocking your way. You have to remove the one. And then there's another one you just pop off just to get access to the plugs, uh, the fill and drain plug a lot easier. So just more work. Yeah, I get why they put it there for protection. But it's just more work, it takes an extra, you know, few minutes to get that, that crap out of the way. Oh boy, all right. Oh, where are we at? Power, oh, power steering fluid. Again, why I do this, this is so helpful now. I can see when I do this again, digging the amount of time I spent to make sure I got the right fluid for the job, for the vehicle, blah, blah, blah. That took time, and now I have it. It's the, you know, I use this Dextron 3, and that matches what, what is in the manuals. And then here's the link to it. Boom. And then get it ahead of time. And that way you're not in a rush. You don't need, you don't need Amazon Prime either. I got rid of Amazon Prime. It was overpriced. Why? Because their videos now have ads in them. I said, why? Well, I got Prime TV. Why am I paying for ads? It's stupid. Why am I watching ads when I pay for Prime, right? And also with Prime, uh, yeah, it was just too expensive. And you still get free shipping if you spend over 35 bucks. And you just put, you click on the radio button, I'll get in an extra day later. And what I found with Prime, I still never got stuff today. They kind of got rid of that anyway. So you don't need Prime. Save yourself 140 bucks and buy some parts with that. You know, you don't need Amazon Prime. Get rid of it, ditch it, toss it, lose it. 
And they really get mad at you when you do that. They push it. Come back. Come back to us. You cannot leave the cult. I'm gone. I'm not paying them any more money. The less subscriptions you have in life, the more money you'll make. Because <laughs> you forget you have these subscriptions. And it just eats away at your uh, income. All right, so we got power steering fluid, and I just did a fill and flush, right? I kept filling it, you know, sucking it out with the uh, syringe, refilling. I did that. There's a video I did on that. Yeah, I think I did four or five, and it got nice and clean. And now what I could do now, next time I do the oil, from now on, every six months, I may just, you know, take the syringe and pull out. Uh, just pull out what's in the reservoir, and then replace with fresh stuff up to the fill line, you know? And then it keeps it clean, right? Why not do it? It doesn't cost much. Uh, let's see. Oh, this one had me nervous, the coolant. It hadn't been done, I don't think at all, on this, bo this boat, this Sequoia. And then I got the uh, stuff they recommended, <clears throat> which is the uh, mixed 50-50 long life, something long life coolant. And now let's go look at it together. It actually takes a lot. Look at that. It takes pretty much three drug, uh, drugs, three jugs, especially when you fill up the reservoir. So it actually came out really close. And I'll tell you what I did there real quick. There it is. And you see that? Super long life antifreeze colon. All right. Yeah, I went in there and I drained the radiator. It just takes, a, this process is a long process, guys. And it's kind of messy because the stuff splatters. But I do your best. Cardboard, cardboard, cardboard. I uh, let the radiator drain first. And I went, there are engine block drains. I said it on a fill and flush, fill and flush. Wait, wait, wait. I'm not going to do that. I went and flushed out whatever's in the reservoir. Pulled the, cave, the hose down, drained it out. Flushed it out with distilled water just to make it nice and clean. Uh, then I went and I, there was a, two engine block drains for the coolant, engine block dr coolant drains. One's on the driver's side, one's on the passenger. I didn't do the driver one because I read someone said they did the passenger. All this uh, coolant came out. And then when they went to do the driver, barely any came out. So I figured it's harder to get to the driver one. I just did the passenger one. I could live with a couple drops of old stuff in there. Uh, check the uh, radiator drain thing and there was not much gunk on it. So I figured I'm good. So actually, draining on the passenger side was not that hard. I, I blasted it with PB Blaster a week before just to make sure it was not seized on there. It's a small little bolt. And I you know, drained it out, let it drip down through the engine. And I you know, rinsed it off at the end of all and just to make sure there's no coolant rusting away, acidic eating my engine. But uh, this is what put back in, so it worked. I mean, I got a lot of coolant out, old coolant, and I filled it back up with three chugs. So yeah, and the levels are perfect. All right. PCV valve, this was good. Mine was all full of soot. Here you go. Do that one. And uh, yeah, that's, uh, let me see, I remember this one. This one was easy to do on Sequoia. Tacoma was a little harder. All right, let's go to the air filter. This is my air filter for Sequoia, big boy. And what I did also was I, um, oh, I didn't write it on here. I just see, I just remembered, I missed something. Uh, I vacuumed it out with shop vac, wiped it out, and then I took it apart and I got the um, MAP, the mass airflow map, map airflow sensor, the ma mass airflow sensor off the uh, airbox intake hose, and I got some spray, especially for that. It's mass airflow spray, and then you just spray it down, get off any carbon buildup or soot or dirt or whatever, and it just improves the operation of your car. So I have to put that on my list. I missed that, or did I miss it? I did it right here, MAS throttle body clean. So that's with the uh, throttle body cleaning as well. You just get in there with a uh, lint-free cloth and you just wipe all the soot off the throttle body very gently, very carefully. Be nice to that thing. It's, uh, it's, uh, you can break it if you're rough with it. Uh, let's see, so we did the PCV. We did the air filter, like I said. We did the cabin air filter, which is inside your glove box. And that is always full of leaves and crap. And if you're in the woods, make sure you don't have mice living in it. All right, do that. It's for your internal cabin filter filtration. Oh, I also did the drive shaft lubrication on the U joints underneath the car. It was a little hard to get to. It'd be better if I jacked it up on all four jacks. That would make it easier to get to stuff. And you get to the Zerks and you pump it for this NLG. Now, why is there an exclamation point? See, I probably mistyped that. That should be NL. Let's look at it. Hold on. 
All right, NLG, it's probably a one, I put an exclamation point. All right, we'll, we'll fix that, I'll check that. All right, other things that are TBD, I wanna get a new steering wheel because mine is starting to K. I'm waiting for this to come back in stock. New ones, OEM ones are like 800 bucks. Oh, this one's like 300, under 300 bucks. I said, okay, and I like it. Some guy did a YouTube video and I said, oh, okay. I always wondered how you do it with the airbags and you just disconnect the battery and you're good to go. So the thing won't detonate on you. All right, dry belt. I have the belt. I have not done it yet. That's one of my last big things to do. Uh, I just have to have fine time to do that. That is pretty much it I want to do on this. I don't want to mess with the tranny, tranny fluid yet. I'm still debating. I don't know. Oh, what I also did, I only had one key and one fob. I went to uh, carkeyexpress.com. I was nervous as hell to do this. It was a, not even a hundred bucks. Let's say a hundred bucks. They send you the programmer to fit in your ODB port. They send you the key. You take a photo of your master key, prove you on the vehicle. And uh, you, it took me a while to get the photos approved because they weren't reading or they were fuzzy or out of, I don't know. They didn't like them. So by the fourth time, I said, are these good? You take a picture of your blade, they cut the key, they send you it. And uh, what you do, you program your key using your master key and the car with the ODB plugged in, the little programmer, easy installer they give you. And I was afraid I was going to brick my car. I just go, this is not going to work. Nothing ever works for me. But it actually worked. They did not send me the right instructions for the Sequoia. So I had to deal with trying to get somebody in tech. Couldn't get a hold of anyone in tech. One guy in the help desk was actually helpful, and he got a hold of tech and said, yeah, this is the number on the dial you need to set. Number three for the 2012 Sequoia for future reference. And that worked. Damn thing worked. So now I have a backup key. I can unlock my door and drive the vehicle in case I lose the, ma the other key. And that acts as a master now. So I, uh, I ordered another fob, and I'm going to... That's cheaper on Amazon. Here it is. Then going back to Car Key Express, they wanted 50 bucks. Here it's like 15 bucks on uh, Amazon. It's probably the same thing. And then you can uh, program it as well. I don't think I need the ODB thing, but there's other ways to jump through a hoop, open the door, spin backwards, touch your nose. It's some kind of weird Toyota thing to actually pair it. So you have a backup fob. I don't really need the fob. Who cares? I mean, as long as you got the key to start it and unlock, you're good to go. And then I made a note here when I did it 620, most of the stuff I did right here, propeller, propeller shaft grease, Air filter, escape play, surface shield, spray where I could, where I see rust underneath and on all the bolts. I hate rusted bolts and I don't want to break a freaking bolt. Exhaust, you can't do much about. So that is what it is. I'll let an exhaust guy deal with it. Uh, rear, front, diff, engine, coolant, power steering, and engine, I did that. Mass, MA, mass airflow sensor, uh, throttle body clean, PCV. Here we go. Here we go. That's it. Uh, that's a note on engine oil. I don't know. I just put that in there. I want to put in here that I did the MAS and throttle body and put a link to the spray. The spray can I got is going to last a lifetime. <laughs> you would. I spent like 12 bucks on it. It's going to last forever. So I'll put a note in here for the um, MAS on the line item. Uh, so there you go. This is very helpful. I recommend doing this. It takes some time, but you build it up over a week or two. And as you're buying stuff, you know, boom, it's all here. It tells you what you do, and you can put notes, had trouble with this. You know, could not reach this. Uh, the coolant, I, I'm going to put some notes in here. It took a while. You need to get in there and get that uh, engine block coolant valve. So this was at 100000 They recommend, I think, every 30 or every 50 after it. Uh, it's not a big deal, but plan for it. It takes time to drain all that stuff out, especially from the engine block. Oh, even the radiator took a while. I'm just like, man. This is taking a long time to train this. Um, and you got to swap out. If your container is not big enough, you got to be swapping into a five gallon bucket because you will almost fill that five gallon bucket up. And then you put it into a containers and take it to your friendly neighborhood city and they'll take it from you and probably dump it in the ocean. You never know what the city does. Uh, it's like recycling. Do they really recycle cans and stuff? No, they just throw it in the general landfill. Uh, yep. But it's a placebo effect. We all feel good that we think we're recycling. All right, so there's that. Now the other vehicle I have is a 2016 Tacoma. I am uh, overdue for engine oil. Got to do that. Hopefully, I don't know, a couple days from now or tomorrow. I'll find time. I did do the rear differential. That was my guinea pig. Uh, same fluids, same washers. You know, got a bunch of those. I got to do the front. 
Uh, I'm going to replace, if I have trouble with this drain plug, it is a 10 millimeter uh, bolt, uh, whatever. I'm going to, I have a replacement from a Lexus. It's the same type and it's a it's a it's a nut versus a freaking hex I'll, i hopefully i won't have any trouble i will be dousing it with uh pb blaster and then do tap 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 with a hammer before i try to undo either of these just so i don't strip them and all that but i had no trouble in a sequoia which is 2012 so i should not have any trouble in the 2016 tacoma uh transfer case this one in the manual it does say I have to fix this. This one does say just 75W. So it does not say 75W90. So this one, I'm telling you, this is, it did say that. So I might, I'm trying to be consistent as possible you know, to put the right stuff in here. Well, I got to get the uh, drain and fill plug torque yet. See, I haven't gone through this yet. So I haven't updated the information power steering fluid. I have done it. Same process on the Sequoia. I have not done yet the coolant, but I wrote down the uh, quantity based on the manual. I did do the valve, and I did do the air filter, did the cabin filter. I did not do the dry belt. So, and then down here, here's what I did so far. I didn't, well, I didn't do engine oil. That was TBD to tomorrow. I was going to do that. Power steering's done. MAS throttle, body clean, propeller grease. Uh, I did the tire rotation probably uh, a couple weeks ago. And that's before I bought my floor jack. Get a floor jack. Oh, my God. 130 bucks at Home Depot for a three-ton. It will make your life easy. And some good floor jacks. And that is it. I just wanted to show you this. Over time, this is a, what do you call it? A, um, a living, evolving document as you do stuff. Like I said, I forgot to put the MAS on here and the fluid. But as you go through it, it grows, it evolves, and you tweak it. And then um, idea being you want to keep your vehicles. I mean, treat them right. They are machines. They need, to, they need some maintenance. They need to take care of them. Uh, I haven't done brakes or anything yet on this one, so it's not there. As I get to the brakes, I will add this. Uh, maybe the tranny fluid. I'm hesitant on that because it's a high mileage vehicle, but definitely I'll do it on Sequoia. Uh, I'm trying to think what else. Steering wheel. Yeah, I want to do that once the steering wheel comes in. And I'm trying this. All this stuff I did, I did not video it or record it because I just wanted to make sure I was focused and didn't screw it up. <laughs> uh, next time I do this, whenever I may just record it, because then people like know there's a million videos out there of it, and everyone has their spin on it. Uh, but yeah, there's some good, some bad, but uh, mostly good. Everything helps. Watch many videos, and you learn how to do it. And take your time, plan accordingly. Um, and that's it, guys. Just wanted to say this is my pro tip: go out, make a spreadsheet. It's gonna evolve. Put it on Google Sheets, and uh, you can share it with others. You can. Um, you know, put it on your phone, print it out, stick it in your trucks or cars, whatever you need just to have for future reference. Yeah, I don't know. I hate looking through the manuals. It's hard to find what you need. Here, boom, I got everything I need. Like I said, I got to put the VIN in here and keep evolving this. All right, guys, that's all I got. A little long video, long-winded on some of the stuff, but it's good to go through it. It's a major service uh, to get all these fluids up to date, but if it's going to help keep your vehicle running, do it. And it's not that expensive. You know, I had to get some tools here and there, but eh, it's worth it because I'm not going to use them. And uh, it's good to shop around the fluids. You can go to your Toyota guy and get the stuff you want to pay top dollar. Or you can get them on Amazon and wait. It's going to take probably a couple of weeks or, to get some of the stuff. It took me to get oil. It took me like um, probably 10 days. They shipped it. And then even, uh, let's see, coolant took a while. I got four jugs of that, the poor UPS guy. But uh, yeah, at least I know can I have someone deliver it to me so I don't have to go to the dealership. I, I kind of don't feel good when I go to car dealerships. I just don't like dealing with them. I don't, that's the vibe they give off. And that's, that's just probably for a reason. That's just who they are. Uh, and I don't want to pay top dollar. And sometimes I look at you, why do you want that? You know, it's like, I know what I'm doing. Jeez. All right, I'm out. I will see you guys in the next one. Maybe it'll be a crypto one. You never know with my channel, man. I just, I'm doing everything. So I figure, why do you have to be a channel that has to be one thing? Just make it a bunch of different things. because. I can only talk about crypto crap so much. In my most recent video, boom, I show you what, I, what not to do. Everything I'm doing is pretty much wrong lately. <laughs> I'm just not doing good on the uh, crypto investments. But um, anyway, I will see you guys in the next video.